They don't feel safe. Uh, people, there's home invasions going on. Yeah. There's heroin, there's drugs back on the street. There's parks aren't safe. Right. People mm -hmm. say it's getting worse. So the crime issue is back up. You got corruption. De Blasio could get indicted. Yeah. But they're they're there for they say no, it's not true. Yeah, right. yeah, the media doesn't report but, that. Right, right. So, but still, it's, it's, it's up to, um, and then you got, uh, you know, the other part is it's getting more expensive to live in the city again. With the housing, you, you know, find it affordable. But they're building all these buildings everywhere. Why is it getting more expensive? Everywhere you go, there's construction. Right, you need somebody who's actually thinking about you to figure out how to get a doctor. So, Malcolm. As your curiosity. What would, well, brief, what would have, might have happened had Romney actually won in 2012? What might have happened if he actually, actually won? Who knows? <laughs> no, that's what I'm I think the country would have been a better place, but I don't know. It's all hypothetical now. Yes, sir. Oh, hi. You might like to know that I too grew up in the South Bronx. Yeah. I grew up actually in Woodlawn. Okay. No, we to Rockland, so. I was in, I was in the, the Yankee Stadium. I was among the Jews, yeah. though, you know. Well, you lived in, uh, let me see, my dad used, he grew up in uh, High Bridge. And uh, he worked at Yankee Stadium. So I went to Fordham University after, mm. for college and for my MBA. So, uh, I know the Bronx really well. I never left. Yeah. That's why I live in Rockland. I miss the Bronx, you know. You're a Yankee fan, right? Uh, Mets, actually. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go Mets. Anyway, anyway, you mentioned that uh, ninety-seven million people voted for Trump. You mentioned that uh, ninety million people who qualified to vote did not vote. Eligible yeah. to vote. I'm, I'm to eligible to vote. vote. I'm glad you said that because I. I'm a supporter of J Gary Johnson, which is unsurprising. I'm the chair of the Brooklyn Libertarian okay. Party. And when I ask people to vote for Gary Johnson, they say, oh, no, they're going to take steal votes from uh, Hillary or right. Trump or whatever, and then just put the lie to it. And uh, I think Glenn would agree with me that had Gary Johnson been in, on the debates, a lot of those 90 million people would see a reasonable candidate, an alternative viewpoint. They might have voted, come out and vote for him. And then, and then, but Gary Johnson said, he said that most people are libertarian. You know, libertarians, as you understand, they, they want limited government, they want less spending, and they want such more, more, more rights to be returned to the people. I think everyone would agree well, they, they feel libertarianish in that regard. <laughs> However, you know, uh, you got this uh, Republican Senate, the, the House, and the President. And do you anyone honestly believe that? We're going to have less spending. We're going to have uh, <laughs> limited government. We're going to have uh, 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 an answer to the debt. That's uh, Trump, that's wait a minute, wait a Trump, I doubt he's going to do any of this. We look at that. He hired, uh, he appointed McMahon to be uh, head of the small business, bill, uh, small business of uh, administration. administration. Now, wh why don't he get rid of that? We don't need any of this. He's like, we need the, we need the. the Abolish some or defund many of these uh, agencies wholesale. He's not going to do anything about the debt, which is which is we're spending what trillion, almost a trillion dollars in interest. This is money in the air. Oh, I think God. I, and then went with it. And then spending. What's he going to do about spending? He's not going to. He's going to increase spending. He wants to. Uh, he's gonna, he wants in, He wants money for infrastructure. He wants to create jobs. Why don't he leave us alone? <coughs> well, I Gary guess, Johnson, uh, when he was governor, he did not create a single job. You know that? I think you might surprise you on some of these issues. But, 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 but by the way, I think you should keep speaking out on those issues they talked about. Because if we don't cre create that kind of pressure on, on Washington, they'll keep doing what they're doing. I mean, Trump, what's interesting about Trump is that they're building him a brand new Air Force One plane. And he's already complaining about the spending. And so if he, if he's it's token, if it's he, token. It's, but still, it's an attitude. I think he wants to reduce the debt, whether he can, Absolutely. you know, I, whether he can or not. I think ultimately, the problem we got is, is so, so many things are like so in place. Crazy. He's got to somehow be able to squeeze the government, and at the same time, people still want Social Security. They still want Medicare. Makes it really tough. Um, I think you got to. Uh, uh, I think you got to look at the defense needs of the country, and it's very hard to cut defense, and it's very hard to cut Social Security, and Medicare. So when you look at those things, it's. And by the way, I'm not disagreeing with you that the, there's big inefficiencies there. I do think those should be rooted out, but it's up to people like you to keep speaking out about it so it happens. So um, so keep doing it because I agree with you that, that that's me personally. That's what we need to do to, to fix things, to make the country run more efficiently and better, and give you more freedom, give me, all of us. 
And some people, have, at times, I've been accused of being a libertarian. I'm not. <laughs> I'm an anarchist. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but anyway, there was two questions back there, and I'll go over it. I'll go to the right so I get more comfortable. I, I volunteered for Trump. Uh -huh. and when I was making calls to North Carolina. I was very surprised how the women were so much more supportive than the men were. The men were telling me, drop dead, go to hell, <laughs> curse me out. It must have been from New York. Probably calling Raleigh Durham. But my question is, I, I was getting very discouraged. At any point, or on a scale of one to 10, how, how much do you feel that for sure he has it? You know? New North Carolina? If we were gonna win, I was always certain we were going to win North Carolina. 2012. And I felt just look at 2012. Yeah, I felt that we were going to win it. So I, I wasn't. I was always optimistic about North Carolina. Uh -huh. Obama was like, overall. You yeah. also were. As long as he, as long as he stuck to message and kept doing what he was going to do, mm -hmm. I thought we were going to win North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. You got a question? My name is Franz Bortoni. Mm -hmm. I went against Joe Crowley. Okay. Mm. What I can't understand, how can a man that lives in right. Washington yeah. gets on the, the, the electoral ballot and runs the United States Congress nine times, now it's his 10th time. Now, it's like having a license in the state of Florida, but you keep your car here in New York City. After 30 days, if they catch that car, they can pound the car. What's the enrollment in this district for Republicans and Democrats? It's 10 to 1. Yeah, but that's what it is. All right, here's the problem. Trump can, I helped Trump out. I was probably one of the very first, uh, I'm the founder of Bring Our Jobs Home. Now, do you, you got, project, do you have a, uh, seriously, what, how did Trump do in that district? He got 40, he got 44,000 votes. Okay. All I know that he got 44,000 votes. Crowley got 130, probably 40,000 was dead people. <laughs> I got 28,000. So the 44,000 that Trump got, I lost 16,000. They didn't. I was the third person on the But my platform, yeah, yeah, sure it was about you. social security taxes. I have a great tax plan. <coughs> and I've been in business for 36 years. In 36 years, every year, there's always money at the end of my, my business year. I use what they call the penny plan. Now, I don't invest a penny in every dollar that I spend. I reinvest a dollar in every dollar that I spend. So if I'm spending three, four million dollars a year that I am dishing out, I'm saving at the end of the year three, four hundred thousand dollars I have in that bank account. At the end of the year, I'm able to pay all my union dues, all, all, all my guys, all their payments are all paid, all my federal taxes, all my materials, and I still end up with a hundred some thousand dollars, including my workers' comp and, mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. We talk about that there's about two or three trillion dollars that's sitting overseas. When I was running for Congress, I wanted to offer a 6% tax where we can bring this $3 trillion from overseas back to the United States and only a charge of a one-time fee of 6%. That we will get almost $3 trillion right. back into you, to the United States of America. Right. I also have, currently we have a four-tier tax, tax plan. Zero to 50,000 is 15%. 50,000 to 75,000 is 25%. 75,000 to 34,000 is uh, 99%. And anything over 35, uh, uh, anything over 100,000 is out of 35%. I came up, I came up uh, with a plan to small the business to bigger the tax cut. Mm -hmm. For example, more businesses, the, the small business in, in America are actually the economic muscle to the public sector. So if anyone wants to start a business, 
in the one million dollar range, I feel that the tax rate should be at 5.9. Okay. I agree. Right. So, what's the question? What's the question? Yeah. Okay. And then up to 10%. <laughs> <seven, laughs> you got my vote. You got my vote. That's a question. What I want to know is, what I want to know is, how are we going to get Crowley? How is he going to keep running on this issue that the man lives in Arlington, Virginia? I tell you, I, you know what it is? We did. I, mean, I, know the district. I know the district. Years ago, I worked in 1984, no, 86. It was 86. I worked for Surf Maltese when he ran against Geraldine Ferraro. Uh -huh. And, uh, and he, we, he, he was positioning him to run for state senate, and we ended up, he ended up uh, getting like 60% of the district that Marty Noor had the senate seat, and then when Marty retired, right. he went for that, and he got elected. He was there for like 20 years in the state senate. So, uh, uh, and Crowley was right. The bad part is when we never looked back at the congressional seat is, it got more and more Democrat. And now to the point where it's 10 to 1. Ten so, to one. so it's like, so the Archie Bunker, because right, Archie's in that district, right? right? Yeah. His old house. Yeah. Archie's dead. <laughs> um, so we lost our vote. They really, they really died and moved out. Exactly. And That's we got to start from ground zero. We got to get all these, a lot of the voters you're talking to, they don't even speak English. <laughs> right. You got to get it. You, so your tax plan is. They automatically vote for someone with a D. No, you got to get it. Right. Too. Oh, yeah. so, so, what I'm saying is, you got to start over and get to these voters, and I grasp it slow, but it's really hard because a lot of them are just. The Republican Party didn't even. We, you know, when they have naturalization ceremonies, we didn't even used to send people out to it. The Democrats would register people as soon as they took their hand down and they swore into the citizenship, they were signing forms on the Democrat. And we got to compete because a lot of them are small business owners. They relate to you. Right. So you, you just got to start working the enrollments and start bringing them back. Yeah. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll,